This is the last event we'll ever do here, which is which is sad and exciting at the same time. Well, you know, we're here today and we brought a few cars in at very short notice just to talk about what cars were developed here. You know, I think it's going to be really sad not to have this space. I mean, as, as I say, we use it, you know, on a weekly basis. So we're looking to see what temporary space we can use. But what's what's you're going to miss is just the history that is in this place. I think if you imagine when this car came out in 19, late 1960, the competition was really the Cadillacs at the time. And if you think of the Cadillacs, they were very exuberant, big fins, 59 was the highest fin that Cadillac ever made. So this was a real contrast to what the competition was doing, certainly the American competition. Beautiful, clean, simple design, very understated, but at the same time, an extremely elegant car. I mean, the door system itself, I think, is just beautiful in terms of the rear opening door and uh, just just uh, just you can, can you imagine just arriving in this car must have been a fantastic statement in its day and it's just a beautiful thing and then you know we were a little bit more adventurous with color materials back then as well so the metallic blue leather also sets off the metallic blue outside so really really great car and it's actually a, it's actually a very nice car to drive as well so it's, 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 it drives in a straight line very well i think if you think about this car when it came out it really epitomizes quiet flight and what we, how we talk about Lincolns today. It was understated, it was elegant, but it was still delivering what a luxury customer really wanted. So to me, there's a lot of correlation between this vehicle and where we're going with Lincoln design today. So this is actually the original clay model for the Ford GT. When we first started this program, uh, you know, we wanted to keep it quiet. We wanted to keep this really quite secret. We really wanted to create a skunk works. So we actually found a, a storage room and a mill room in the basement that we're, we were using to still store styrofoam. And we realized that there had been a, it'd been a, there'd been a plate there at one point where you can actually put clay models. So we cleared that out, we cleaned it up. It still wasn't very um, luxurious when we were finished it, but it was really great because then we actually, instead of using the normal key card, we actually had a key for the door so that no, so no one else could get in. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a fantastic effort to not just design the car, but to, to keep the story quiet. And, uh, and we weren't there for nearly two years without anyone realizing what was going on behind the door. So it was, a, it was a really, really great time. One of the reasons we have the showroom is we like to look at a car from a distance. So what was great about the GT specifically is we'd already brought out the 2003 GT, which really sort of covered the, let's go back to our heritage and, and mimic the original car. That really allowed us to do something much fresher on this vehicle. So we really wanted to create the, the image of the GT. We picked out certain cues, but at the same time, we wanted to move it forward and look like a, a true supercar of the 21st century. And I think the team really achieved that. This is the, I think this is a 1999 concept for the Ford Thunderbird. And this was, a, this was us, us bringing back an old nameplate. And as such, we wanted to pay her heritage to the original vehicle. So you can see the cues of, a, of the Thunderbird in this vehicle. I think what's very important about this car is the stance of the car. It's sort of high at the front and falls back towards the rear, which was really against trend in its time. So it really was looking back at the 60s and 50s to see what was the stance of vehicles and how can we, how can we influence a new vehicle that way. One of the trends in the 90s was, was really looking back at the past and bringing back icons that people remember, the Beetle, the Mini. So this was an example of what we call retrofuturism, which was actually bringing, bringing forward from the past something in a, in a modern vehicle. And I think this is a great example of it. Obviously, it's sad to, to be leaving this building, but I think we're all really excited about the new building. I think it's going to be a fantastic facility for, for designers and design itself. I think it's going to be an amazing sort of collaborative space. It's going to have its own showroom. It's going to be big, bigger and better than this. It's going to have courtyards like this place has, but I think it will be, I think the, the ambience will be different and I think it will be extremely modern, extremely attractive to, to everybody and, and I think it will be a, a, a complete sort of a um, landmark for Ford as it moves forward. I think people are going to get the same sense of excitement and sense of pride that they built something new and something fantastic. So I'm hoping that, you know, 50, 70 years on, 75 years on, it's going to be the same experience when we open the new campus.